And joining us now is criminal attorney Arthur Idala. Thank you so much for being here Thank with us. Thank you so us. much. I, just hearing that real quick, like, what... <laughs> When you're a criminal defense attorney and your client is outside saying yeah. these bad things about the judge, and then you got to walk in there later that day or the next day. I, I had a client like that. He was a, a New York billionaire. And I mean, he was saying the nastiest, meanest things to me, but loud enough that the judge could mm. hear it. And I just was like, Mr. Hirschfeld, do you realize <laughs> that this judge, if you get convicted, number one, has your life in your hands, but number two, there's so many rulings that he has discretion over mm -hmm. between now and the end of the trial. Like, why are we ticking him off? And I'll tell you what he said. If that judge was so smart, he wouldn't be sitting up there. He'd be making all the money I just paid oh, you, and he'd be goodness. sitting down here. So, yeah, I, Todd Blanche has, has got a really rough road ahead of him. Your reaction to the judge actually calling Trump in contempt of court, this gag order? I mean, look, it's not surprising. Um, the judge kind of set himself up to be in this difficult position. Anytime you, you put in a gag order... Um, you have to be able to ba back it up. It's like a parent with a child. You know, if you don't do this, I'm going to take away your phone. Well, then you got to take away the phone. The problem is here, the judge doesn't have that much power. I mean, $9,000, Lindsay, I mean, what is that doing for Donald Trump? And I think, and this is just a guess, if he put Trump in jail even for f six hours, like Trump, that's exactly what Trump wants. Mm -hmm. I mean, it will... It will be international news. So you don't I mean, really they'll, they'll... think that that's a possibility. I mean, I know he has the power, but you're saying you don't think he's going to actually act. You also have to look at Donald Trump, the individual. Forget about, or, or any individual in that position, a 77-year-old man who's never been in trouble in his life, in the lowest level crime, felony crime, a white-collar crime with no victims. You know, judges are very, very reluctant to put someone like that in prison for a minute. Uh, Trump called the judge... Uh, with this gag order, totally unconstitutional. Your response to that? Well, it's, you know, it does in, infringe on someone's rights. I mean, the, you know, people confuse the First Amendment. The First Amendment has to do with government trampling on your rights to speech. And this is the government doing that. It's a balancing test. And, you know, look, it's very frustrating when you're accused of something and other people are out there beating you up and you can't reply to it. It's, it's, you know, it's a difficult position for a lawyer to be in. I, when I tried the Harvey Weinstein case, that was the position we were in. We weren't allowed to say anything, but the complaining witnesses, lawyers, the likes of Gloria Allred, were out there every day beating the heck out of us, and we could not retort. In fact, I did a, a, a short radio interview with the late Imus in the morning, mm -hmm. Diane Imus, and I got called in the next day, and I got yelled at, and all I was talking about was the how jury selection takes place. I didn't do what Trump did. And so, you know... Judges should really be very, very tight before they just hand out these gag orders, especially when it's hard for them to ultimately enforce them. Your reaction to what's played out in court so far? They're laying the groundwork. I mean, they're laying the groundwork because they and they, and they their base of the prosecutor's trial has to be so strong, like solid, like you're building a, a skyscraper, not a house, a skyscraper, because... When Michael Cohen comes in, that's a hurricane, an earthquake, a tornado, all wrapped into one. I mean, they're going to cross-examine the heck out of him, unlike almost every other uh, complaint, other, any, every other witness that you see testifying. But hundreds of prosecutors have gotten convictions before with horrible people as their main witness. So it doesn't eliminate them, but they need to be on very strong grounds when he takes that stand. And before I let you go, as we were discussing uh, during Aaron's piece, is it really damning for Trump that at least the allegation on the witness stand was that he really didn't care about keeping Story Daniels quiet until after the Access Hollywood tape weeks before the election? Yeah, and that because then in the prosecution's summation, they're going to say although you just heard our colleague, the defense attorney, say this was about his family, the timeline doesn't add up. It's he doesn't get excited about this. This doesn't get any traction until his sex life and the way he treats women really become part of the campaign after the Access Hollywood tape. That's how you know, ladies and gentlemen, beyond a reasonable doubt, he was only doing this for the election. And if that's true, you have to find him guilty. Arthur Idala, always appreciate your insight and Pleasure's your time. Thank you so much.